there's been some confusion around the new public preview and the analysis services connector with relation to what are actually the requirements to use the connector. One of the requirements that was stated originally was that Azure Active Directory Dersync was required in order to use the, uh, the actual uh, analysis service connector. So that may be true and that may not, depending on your configuration of your tenant. And so what I wanted to do is show you why you wouldn't need Azure Active Directory. So in this case, I've got a tenant with a couple different domains registered to this. Um, so I've got my guyinacube.com, which is my primary domain. I've got uh, another cube.guyinacube.com, which is a child domain of guyinacube.com. And then I've added one recently called battlestarcloud.com, which is my VM environment in Azure VM. So that the domain within the Azure VM piece actually has a two-way trust with my domain uh, that's um, my local VMs on my laptop called uh, gynacube.com. So with that two-way trust, I can do things such as uh, validate that, you know, analysis services connector actually works in an Azure VM, which I've done. Um, in this case, though, what I want to show you is that I've actually got Dersync enabled for gynacube.com. Um, you can actually see here on the status for some of these user accounts for gynacube.com that they say synced with Active Directory. That means that these accounts were actually added via the Dersync uh, piece of this. So what I want to focus on is battlestarcloud.com and the domain that I have in my Azure VM. So one thing you'll see here is that it just says in cloud. So I don't actually have Dersync enabled for battlestarcloud.com. Um, and I did that intentionally because I want to show that we don't necessarily need Dersync enabled. So whenever we register a domain, let's go to the O365 domains, and you can see that I have these domains set up. Um, setup's complete, I don't have any actions on them, and I do have the four listed. The fourth one, the onmicrosoft.com, is the default domain for any O365 tenant. Um, but then I've got my three custom domains that are there as well. And so when you set up a domain here, if you actually go to Azure Active Directory, let me refresh this, we should see all four of these listed here or the three of them listed here. Uh, where's Battlestar? There we go. I had to refresh. So you will see the custom domains listed here. We have all four. Um, the uh, the guyinacube.com is the only one here. If I go to directory integration, you'll see that uh, integration with local Active Directory is activated. Uh, we should see that for another cube.guyinacube.com as well. And it is, it's activated. And if we come back to battlestarcloud.com and we go to directory integration, it should, uh, that actually shows activated too, but I don't have, um, uh, while battlestarcloud.com is verified, um, I don't actually have that set up with the Dersync pieces in it. So it's only going to refresh the um, the guynacube.com accounts. So, and we saw that for the um, the actual uh, within the user accounts for O365, we saw that it was just in cloud. I just added that manually myself in O365. So I didn't actually come, it didn't come from Active Directory within my VMs. So now what I want to do is let's go and let's go over to the tabular machine that's running on battlestarcloud.com and I want to add the analysis services connector to that. So we'll go over here. Alright, and let's go ahead and connect. So I've got a tabular instance here on as a named instance. And you can see here that I have two tabular models here, or two databases, uh, one for the normal adventure works and one for the internet sales. So we're going to use the AS connector to utilize these. So let's go and install it. Agree. Okay, now we can hit launch. 
we'll bring up the configuration piece of this. Go ahead and hit next. All right now we need to sign in with a Power BI account. I'm going to sign in with my main guyinacube.com account. Keep me signed in. All right, that's done. Next. So now this is, we need to list out the server that we're connecting to. And then it wants a user account that is an admin on the AS server. As I mentioned before, I've got a two-way trust between GuyNacube.com and uh, BattlestarCloud.com. So I can use an account from either one as long as it's listed as the admin in analysis services. So I already have one. Power BI connector and get the password. All right, we'll give it a name. We'll go init next. And what this is doing is actually creating the connector with inside of the Power BI service. All right, and that was successfully created. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's go back to our app server. All right, let's go back to active users just to show that again. All right, so we've got our John Doe at BattlestarCloud.com that's in the cloud. It's got licenses for all the Power BI stuff. Um, the next thing we want to do is we are going to sign into PowerBI.com. And I'm going to do an in private because I'm already signed in with my asaxton at guyinacube.com. So let's do this app powerbi.com. We're going to log in with our John Doe. John Doe at battlestarcloud.com. Sign in. And current password. So now, this is the first time this user has been into Power BI. Got it. And if we look up here, we can see that we're signed in with John Doe at BattlestarCloud.com. This is not synced with my local Azure or with my local Active Directory within my VMs. Um, so this is just an account that's created in O365. So let's go ahead and add a data set. And we'll say SQL Server Analysis Services Connect. And one thing we can see here is we can see Captain Thrace. This is the tabular instance that's on my Battlestar VM. And we can see, so right away I can see that I've got access to this because otherwise I would have gotten like no databases listed. Um, but this user can connect and can see all of these. So let's go ahead and we'll just pick the sale, internet sales model. We'll connect. And then we'll see this listed as a data set. Got it? So now let's go back to our tabular. We'll crank up Profiler Trace so we can see what's going on here. Yep. Go ahead and run. All right, let's go back to our app. Let's do some stuff here. Just go create a report and we'll drag some fields on. Nothing fancy. So we'll grab number of cars owned. And we'll grab gender. All right. Now, if we go back to profiler, go ahead and stop that. Uh, one thing we can see here. So we can see that it's connecting with this PBI connector. And the other thing we can see here is we should see an effective username listed, which we do. So it's right there. Um, so we can see that we're passing in John Doe at battlestarcloud.com. This works because we know that um, 
this is a valid user within this domain. And so when it passes that effective user, it validates. And so it's a valid user, so we can go ahead and use it. So let's try this with another user. So if we go back to our apps here, we'll go ahead and sign out. Sign out, leave the page. Uh, let's go back and pick a user that doesn't necessarily have rights to this. So let's pick John Doe, a guy in a cube.com. That user will not have the ability to log into that particular instance because it's not listed as an admin and it doesn't have rights to that. So we'll do John Doe at guy. This account is synced with Azure Active Directory. Uh, this is the first time he's come into Power BI, so we got the same thing. He's got it. Um, if we go look, we can see that it's now John Doe at GuyInACube.com. So we'll go to Datasets, Analysis Services, Connect. We'll still see that server listed here, which is the one that we chose. And then if I click on it, we should not see any models because he doesn't have rights to it. There you go, no database is found. So this user cannot connect to that AS server, so we're not gonna see any of the model servers. And so this is why we don't necessarily need um, the DirSync enabled. If the account that we create with inside of our tenant matches the account that's in the local domain, it will be used. Because this is, whatever's listed here for the username, that's what's gonna be passed into the effective username uh, when we try to connect to the local analysis services tabular instance. And so in this case, the John Doe at BattlestarCloud.com is a valid user in that domain, and that user does have the correct permissions to connect. And so we may think that, hey, there's some security issues here, but there are two factors here that make this, um, uh, from a security perspective, that make this somewhat valid and intentional on the administrator's perspective. One, this account is uh, has access to that analysis services account. Um, so we've defined permissions for that user against that server that they're allowed to use that server and connect and grab data. Um, so you can control those permissions on the AS tabular instance itself. Uh, the other thing here is that this domain has to be a validated domain as part of this tenant. Um, so that domain is part of the tenant. We're allowing you to create a user here as an admin. Um, and so at that point, this user should be valid at the local um, AD instance. So it has to match that. So like if I were to sign in with something as like on Microsoft.com, that wouldn't work. Um, so where we do need DirSync is if you do have a user in here with a domain, um, say it's an on Microsoft.com domain, and we need to map that user to an actual local user on premise, then that's where DirSync is needed. So we need to cop those accounts need to be migrated up into O365 and we can map that up. Um, that's where the requirement for DirSync comes into play. So, but as long as the domain is part of the tenant and the username matches an actual username that's on your local active directory, DirSync is not required. So hopefully this clears up uh, the requirements there. Um, the other thing that you saw too is that, that uh, Power BI AS connector was actually running in an Azure VM against the tabular instance. So it works fine in both a local VM, a local bare metal box, and it runs uh, in an Azure VM as well. Um, and I've had no issues with connecting on any of that. So, and you saw the data come in. All right, hopefully this uh, gives you some ideas of uh, how to do it.